Hey there, everybody. I'm recording this on Tuesday, April 7th. It has been a minute since I have put a new video in this Facebook group, so thank you all for your patience on that. Um, the institution where I'm an instructional designer reopened with online classes this week, so as you can imagine, it's been a little bit crazy for me supporting all of those faculty as well, but I'm super excited to get in here and record another video and share with you kind of the conversations that I've been having this morning with folks about creating lecture videos and some best practices for that, because if you we're teaching a face-to-face lecture-based course, obviously you want to figure out the easiest way to translate that into an online environment without having to reinvent a ton of things. Um, so the first thing I will tell you just from a tech standpoint is it is important to remember that just because something is easy for you on the tech side doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy for your students. And the biggest example of that is narrated PowerPoints. A lot of instructors are very familiar with PowerPoint, and so when it comes time to make a lecture recording, they instantly jump to narrated PowerPoint because it's familiar to them, it's very easy, it's what they know, and it is pretty easy on the instructor standpoint to create those videos. The challenge with narrated PowerPoint files that you end up with have a lot of moving parts and a lot of variables and a lot of things that can go wrong on the receiving end. If you've ever tried to email a narrated PowerPoint, you know that that can just be a really big challenge. So as kind of a sidebar to this conversation, if you are going the narrated PowerPoint route, I would highly recommend that among other things, you export your narrated PowerPoint as a video before sharing it with your students. Um, or you might want to consider trying a different tool. The one I'm really excited about right now is Loom because they have a free educational license if you sign up with your educational um, email address and it makes past videos that are really easy to share. So that's just a sidebar, but from a technical standpoint, Easy for you does not mean easy for students. Ideally, we want something that is both easy for you and your students. Um, and I guess if we have to pick one, we want to make sure that it's easy for students no matter what. So um, just a disclaimer, be careful if you're using narrative PowerPoint and let me know if you have more questions about that. But there are two kind of key fundamental things I want you to keep in mind if you are recording lecture videos for your students that are different from the online classroom to the face-to-face -face classroom. The first one is that you want to think in terms of small chunks. Less is 100% more. There's lots of research on online learning that talks about like ideal video length and I've seen everywhere from like three minutes to six minutes to 12 minutes to 15. Um, I think if you can keep it under 15 for sure, that is a really good best practice. And I know a lot of folks are coming from like the 50 minute lecture mentality and try really hard to not make your online students sit through a straight 50 minute lecture. Um, a, from an attention standpoint, and B, from a tech standpoint, those files are huge and they can be hard to upload, they can be hard to download, they can cause lags and problems. So what I would encourage you to do when you're thinking about your lecture, even if you keep the same amount of content, try to chunk it into at least 15 minute chunks or smaller. If you are back to going that PowerPoint narrated PowerPoint route, the easiest way to do that is to take your PowerPoint itself before you record it and break the PowerPoint into like part one, part two, part three, part four. So you have four different files um, and you can just copy your PowerPoint and then in the copy, delete, you know, everything but the, the chunk that you want to do and record your PowerPoint that way. Um, but just think of things in terms of 15 minute chunks. It's just going to make it a lot easier for everybody. Also think about can you condense that? Does it have to be 50 minutes of content? Um, can you get away with 20 minutes of content or, you know, 30 minutes of content or something? Try to keep it as short as possible. The other big fundamental difference when it comes to lecture videos in an online setting is that in an online setting, you don't necessarily have any confirmation that students have watched and retained the video. When I'm lecturing to a group of people face to face, I can see their faces. I can see who's paying attention. Um, I can at least assure that they are physically present in the room. Um, when it comes to online lectures, there are ways you can tell like, has a student clicked on it? Has a student watched it? But you really have no guess if they've actually retained the information or received the information. And so I really encourage the use of something I call content checks in an online classroom just to ensure that students have consumed the content, the lecture video that we need them to do. So when you're thinking of your lecture, um, a lot of folks that use active learning and one of the folks I was talking with today was already including in the lecture some activities like telling your students, okay, now I want you to go write this down or now I want you to pause the video and go do this. All of that is amazing. You also want to think about how 
can I document this in some way that's very low stakes, very easy. We don't want students to stress about this, but we need some way for students to be like, yep, I got to the end of the video. There's a ton of different ways you can do this. It can be as simple as if somebody is taking notes and you just have them like take a selfie or take a picture of their notes and upload those or email them to you. It can be as simple as that. Um, I really like using Google Forms for this kind of thing and just asking a couple of questions, even if it's just like, what questions did you have about the video or share one quote that you liked about the video? Um, anything like that. If you want to be, I don't know, kind of cutesy about it, you can always hide Easter eggs in your video. I've done that before and put like, had a text thing come up on the screen that says, email me this hashtag for a couple extra points. Um, you can have students post something to the discussion board. You can have a one question quiz. Whatever you do, you just have to think of some measure of accountability that works for your class and works for your students that isn't going to be too stressful. So those are things I want you to keep in mind when you are doing your lecture videos. One, think about the tech for your students. And if you need help with that, ask me questions or ask your institution's um, instructional tech and instructional design support for the best way to do that. Um, narrative PowerPoint is not necessarily your friend, though it certainly can be made to work. Two, don't think in terms of a 50 minute lecture, think in terms of like 15, 10 to 15 minute lecture chunks, shorter if you can. And three, think about some sort of method of accountability to ensure that your students have consumed the lecture. That can look like a lot of different things um, and there's not a right or wrong answer, but you do wanna have some way for them to show you that they consume that content. So I hope everyone is still doing well. As always, if you have any questions, um, please let me know. I'm going to try to be a little more active in the group this week. Um, there's some also some fun things coming down the pike. I can't wait to share with you guys. So have a good day. Happy Tuesday. And we'll talk to you soon.